Hey folks, why haven't you subscribed yet? Tell them, Lily. Let's talk about invasive predators. Uh, as I've said in my, <coughs> sorry, as I've said in my cat video, there have, uh, the common house cat, the domesticated cat, is a, uh, has been a problem in some parts of the world, uh, for being detrimental to, to the environment. Uh, this video, I'm going to expand on that, uh, and there'll be a, a future video. This one is going to be, uh, invasive predators. A future video will be, uh, I will cover, um, non-predatory invasives as well as, um, invasive plants. Um, now that being said, invasive species are one of the, it is a big driving factor in extinction, uh, in today's world. Uh, it is ranked there with deforestation uh, and global warming. Um, but it is something, uh, invasives are a big threat uh, to the world we live in, at least the world that we are familiar with. Um, in this video, I want to cover five. Uh, I will have a picture, I'll show a picture of each species when I bring that up. Um, the first one most people are familiar with as being an invasive, and that is uh, Burmese pythons. In the early 90s, Hurricane Andrew hit um, southern Florida. Um, when that happened, large amounts of... Um, Burmese pythons that were being kept in a facility uh, for the pet trade were accidentally unleashed into the wild. Burmese pythons are a one of the more hardier pythons. They do not require tropical conditions as a lot of these pythons do. They uh, can survive in the subtropics. And uh, these these pythons have wreaked havoc uh, in southern Florida. They eat native wildlife. They compete for food with the native predators. Um, and it's just it's an all-around bad thing. Um, they get really large. Um up to 20 feet long and have the ability to kill humans through constriction. They do not actively hunt humans. Uh, there's really no snake um, on the planet who seek humans out just to eat solely as humans. Um, but they are, there are a, uh, they do have the ability to uh, kill and uh, eat small children, unfortunately. Um, there's a bounty on Burmese pythons. Uh, and unfortunately, because of the invasiveness of these creatures, there has been um, restrictions to the pet trade uh, for not just Burmese pythons, but other large constrictors. Uh, that can play havoc on the environment. The The issue is most of the large constrictors do not, um, are not able to withstand the colder uh, temperatures in Florida. Um, though Florida is very warm, it's not in the tropics. Uh, so they are, uh, and, and even these, even the Burmese python will be restricted uh, to a temperature zone um, because 
even though they are more hardy. In Tennessee today, we have East Tennessee on the Cumberland Plateau. I woke up and there was uh, about six inches of snow. It snows quite regularly and stays, well, not quite regularly, but it's, we get two to three snows a year and there's a lot of times where we see below uh, freezing temperatures even down to zero. Uh, these snakes would not be able to maintain in an environment like Tennessee. Um, though most likely they could migrate into uh, northern, or into uh, northern Florida and into Georgia. That being said, uh, there are more and more winters where um, these things are to where the temperatures are not as cold, so that could change. Uh, alligators are now being seen in Tennessee again. Now, that being said, I do want to, with me saying that, I do want to address an issue. And that issue is that there is a difference between an invasive species and a natural migration. Um, alligators are naturally migrating north as the temperature gets warmer. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, at one point, alligators lived in Tennessee. Uh, look up the gray fossil site. They have found hundreds of alligator fossils, alligator mississippiensis, at Gray, um, but um, the alligators are a more hardy of the crocodilians. Um, so a natural, a natural migration or a natural expansion of territory is not a uh, necessarily a bad thing, um, and it's not something that we as humans should be arrogant enough to keep in check. Uh, however something that we cause we do need to try to remedy um, that brings us to species number two it is a the uh, lionfish again in southern florida this was most likely releases from the pet trade lionfish are a saltwater fish um, a lot of you are familiar with the uh, these quite beautiful fish um, however when they are released into a into the coral reefs reefs of Florida, where they are not native, and 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 lionfish are voracious predators, and there is no natural predation for the lionfish in in Florida waters because they are venomous. Uh, because of that, they are taking over and killing a lot of the reef fishes. Coral reefs in general are being hit hard reef bleaching um, and other effects through climate change is really impacting coral reefs and there is a lot we do not understand and uh, we do know that there's quite a few uh, symbiotic relationships uh, that take place between things like fish and reefs fish and anemones and that kind of thing uh, so there is a, uh, a kill order on, on these. Um, basically the state of Florida, if you catch a lionfish while you're fishing, they want you to kill it. You cannot release it back into the wild. It has to be, uh, it has to be, uh, put down. Uh, again, they are beautiful fish. It, uh, it's just unfortunate that in a situation like this, they do cause so much havoc. Um, that being said, uh, if you are in Florida uh, and you see a lionfish, if you're fishing, as I said, kill it. If you're swimming, do not try to catch them. They are venomous. Uh, their pains are very sting. Um, they're Pains are very stingful. Their stings are very painful. Uh, though I'm, I don't believe they're life-threatening. They are. They're not something you want to be stung by. And it's not really necessarily a sting, say, as in a hornet or a uh, scorpion. These are more of a uh, 
their spikes. They're like they have uh, bony spikes in their fins, uh, their dorsal fins and things. And these these uh, spikes are coated in a in a venom, and it is a true venom. A venom is injected, whereas a poison is ingested. Uh, but uh, yeah, so a very beautiful fish is causing a lot of damage uh, okay so that is that is uh, animal number two animal number three is another fish though this one is freshwater this fish is snakehead the, the, uh, the, the group of fish known as snakeheads uh, unfortunately with snakeheads they are not restricted to the tropics as far as uh, the entire group uh, most likely uh, there there are a couple beliefs snakeheads were eaten or an Asian delicacy in places and uh, some believe they may have been brought in through a fish market or something like that the fish were live these fish are extremely hardy I will do a video solely on snakeheads in the future, uh, but they can live outside of water. Um, they do have the ability to uh, gulp air and uh, uh, diffuse oxygen in the blood that way through their swim, swim bladders, uh, much like gar and the, the South American fish, Arapaima. Uh, but these things are voracious predators I don't want to say more so than the, the lionfish but snakeheads eat a lot uh, the thing with snakeheads however is though that they compete with sport fish and sport fishermen really uh, do not like snakeheads uh, so there is a uh, they are another uh, fish that if you catch them the state of Florida state says you must kill them uh, they are in Florida they're also in Maryland during a couple ponds in Maryland uh, so far as far as I'm aware the, Mar the Maryland species uh, which is a uh, more temperate snakehead they are easier they are uh, so far they have been uh, Kept under control, more as a Florida uh, invasion of the uh, of the snakehead in Florida. And I think it's the bullseye snakehead, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure, but anyway, they those are getting out of control, and uh, they are spreading. So if you're in Florida and you're fishing in the freshwater canals, and you catch a snakehead, kill it. Uh, there are restrictions in many states. You can no longer keep snakeheads as pets. There were, they were a, an aquarium uh, fish, and that was one of the other uh, suggestions that they may have uh, come from uh, the aquarium trade as people uh, released, lar uh, released them into the wild once they get, got too large. Uh, that being said, if you have a pet, no matter if it is a snake, if it is a cat, if it is a um, a fish, anything. If you have a pet, do not release that pet into the wild. If you can no longer take care for it, uh, take care of it. If you can't uh, provide the care, seek out help through a shelter, through uh, friends, something. Do not release any pet into the wild, even if it's a pet that may technically be native to the area you live. Do not release that pet into the wild. For one, that pet has become reliant upon you to feed that pet. Uh, though many do have their, still have their predatory instincts, it can cause them stress if you release them and they are no longer, they no, no longer have their food source. Number two, if they're not native, you're introducing an invasive, invasive species or a non-native species. If they have no natural predator in the area, if there's not a predator that's going to eat that 
fish or that pet when it reproduces then it is going to multiply beyond belief and that will destroy the environment has the potential to destroy the environment so if you have a pet do not release that pet into the wild if it is native and you release that pet into the wild you may be releasing diseases into the wild population your pet may have be a carrier of some disease that it picked up through a breeding program or at a pet store where you purchased it or 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 if you caught the the animal yourself though i would not suggest wild caught i would not suggest you catching pets and bring them into your home it's better to find captive bred but if you go to a location and you catch a animal and it has a disease and you release it into another population that may not have been exposed to that disease, you can destroy that population of animals. So always, always, always find something else to do with your pet besides releasing the wild. Even a goldfish. A goldfish is a carp and a goldfish can be very harmful to a pond or a, a, a lake or something like that. Uh, most likely a small goldfish will get eaten because it is something that is bright and will be spotted. But goldfish can get really large and they will quickly get larger than the predators in the area. So do not release any pet into the wild. Okay. Now this brings us to number four. And though this one, most people would not consider a predator. Though they are. And that's wild hogs. Or pigs in general. Pigs are very adaptive. Pigs are highly intelligent. And it does not take long for a pig released from a farm. Or if a pig gets loose from a farm. It does not take that pig very long to revert to a wild state. Uh, a pig can survive. They are very good survivors. Uh, and they wreak absolute destruction on the environment. They kill native animals for food. Uh, they destroy ground, uh, ground nesting birds. They destroy their nest, eat their eggs. Um, they cause massive amounts of erosion because they root the ground and tear up the ground and then the rain comes and washes the topsoil soil away that they had rooted up. Pigs are very, very harmful. And they're very, very dangerous. Um, a pig is very capable of killing a human being. Um, Mostly a big part of what they do The pig will have tusks Modified teeth that come out from the lower jaw and some crawl out from the upper jaw. And these are very sharp They will run at you and most of the time rake up Your inner leg cutting the femoral artery you bleed to death um, and to be completely frank, they will eat you as well if they are hungry. Uh, it's very, very, very rare that a pig will eat someone after they kill it. Because most of the time when they kill somebody, they are trying to escape. But there is the possibility, and they're not going to hunt you for food. That's not what I'm saying. But there is a possibility that they, have, they can eat people, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, don't release pigs, obviously, into the wild. Uh, now, this comes, now, this brings me to my fifth and final animal on this list today. And that is the American bullfrog. And you may, if you live in eastern North America where bullfrogs are native, you may be saying, well, that's kind of stupid. It's a bullfrog. It's a frog. <laughs> and it is. In eastern North America, they have a lot of predators. 
and all of our animals in eastern North America, including our other native frogs and other things, are used to competing with bullfrogs or used to dealing with bullfrogs. The bullfrog was introduced to western North America in places. Uh, and it was introduced uh, purposefully by the government. And the thing with the bullfrog is they are predators to the core. A bullfrog will eat what it can fit in its mouth. And it has a very large mouth and can eat just about anything smaller than it. They will eat mice. They will eat snakes. They will eat fish. They will eat other frogs. And they are just amazing little predators. And again, in a place like East Tennessee or the West Eastern United States, they're they're nothing because they <laughs> our environment is used to them. It is evolved. The bullfrog was evolved to live in this environment. In Western North America, they were not, and they have put a lot of pressure on both the native frog species as well as other native species in the area. So. Uh, and the problem with frogs is they have a lot of babies. They lay a lot of eggs, gelatinous masses of eggs, which turn into tadpoles, which turn into froglets, and then the frogs. These are hundreds, so it can take literally no time for a, a group of five or six frogs to completely uh, overtake an environment, a pond or, or a, uh, a small lake or something. Uh, and once they're established, they're established. Uh, you can't kill them all. If you poison the water, you're poisoning the native species. So it's just, it's, an, it's not, there's a no-win situation when it comes to frog, bullfrogs. Uh, so, the government has, for a large part, learned its lesson as far as introducing, our government has learned its lesson as far as introducing non-native species to a region. Uh, some people still do it. Uh, even our government at times still does that. Uh, in things like sport fishing. Uh, with that being said, most of the time... Uh, they sterilize the fish so that when they release a stock of fish into an enclosed lake, those fish are sterile and cannot reproduce. And even if they can, most of the time the reproduction, the uh, conditions are not conducive for reproduction of those of that species. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, and share. Oh, I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Just, if, if you're not subscribed, feel, uh, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I am trying to push for 800 uh, subscribers. Once that happens, I will be doing a giveaway of Snamal teeth, uh, fossilized teeth, uh, that will be in a, another video. And I will link that video in this one. Uh, this has got a little longer than what I wanted, but thank you all. Have a great day.